Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Welcome to our weekly Top 5 Fridays Ski Industry News videos. Uh, before we get into the news, um, we are now pretty much smack dab in the middle of February already. In fact, today is my birthday, February 12th. Um, but we're also in the blizzard month of our Ski Happy Photo Contest. Um, so Blizzard's giving away a pair of Bonafide 97s. We did a little kind of mini review of the Bonafide earlier this week. We have a long review of the Bonafide that we did back in the spring, too. So you can go watch that if you're unfamiliar with the ski. Um, but yeah, definitely encourage you to enter some photos into the Ski Happy Photo Contest as usual. Um, we've been testing a ton of skis still. Uh, this week, gosh, I don't even really, like remember at this point. We did uh, Armada, um, skied some Razi and some Dina Star. Today we were skiing Liberty up at Stowe. Um, so lots of ski testing, uh, lots of stuff to share with you down the road. So pretty excited about that. Um, and yeah, with that, I think we can get straight into this week's news. Um, so first up, we have our FIS World, World Cup updates um, but we're pretty much right in world champs now in Cortina um, so few updates uh, Laura Gutbarami uh, pretty much continues her dominance um, picking up a win in Super G um, but it was pretty cool to see Michaela taking third you know earlier this season we talked about like whether we would even see Michaela at all in speed events. Like she really wasn't training for speed events, really wasn't pressuring herself at all to perform in speed events. So, you know, I think you could make an argument that that's one of her more impressive finishes of the season, considering what she's put into Super G this year. Um, so great to see. Uh, we also had two men's races in Garmisch uh, before they headed over to Cortina. Uh, Travis Ganong, most notably, picked up a 7th in downhill and a 12th in Super G. So, great skiing from Travis. Um, and then he also picked up an 8th in Super G in Cortina. Um, so, lots more racing to do in Cortina. Um, and then other, other ski racing news. Um, just a couple days ago, I think it was just a couple days ago, uh, Ted Ligety kind of publicly announced that he will be retiring after the World Championships. Um, so kind of a bummer, but Ted's had a, a fantastic seat or career. Um, you know, I, I, he's, he's left his mark on the sport of ski racing. Um, I think probably my favorite thing thinking back, thinking back about Ted Ligeti is, is watching him ski those like 35 meter radius GS skis. Um, I, I felt like it was when, when they did that, you know, like the super, super big turn radius for GS skis. I always thought like Ted Ted Ligeti's skiing kind of stuck out among the group. Just the way that he could bend the ski and, and get it to to flex into shorter turns was was really impressive to watch. Um, so yeah, fantastic career from Ted Ligeti. I think he's gonna spend more time with his family and and on his company Shred Optics. Um, so yeah, just wanted to share that that Ted Ligeti is planning his retirement. Um, next up. As usual, we have some COVID updates. Um, we're going to start right here in the United States. Probably the biggest piece of COVID ski-related news in the United States was that there were 109 confirmed cases among Winter Park employees. Um, but they're pretty confident about the situation over there. They have some stringent quarantine measures. And they're pretty darn confident that all the cases have been contained. Um, so that's great to hear. Hopefully, you know, hopefully that's the case and, and things are, you know, things will get back to some resemblance of normal over there. Um, over in France, unfortunately, they extended the ski resort closures another month. Um, so realistically, that's kind of all but eliminating the possibility of a ski season or, or the end of a ski season over there. Um, and they're also, from all the sounds or all the reports that we're reading, um, it sounds like they're being a little bit more strict about international travel. You know, we talked a lot about the, the France-Switzerland dynamic and people traveling back and forth. So we've, we've heard some reports of people being actually stopped from, you know, like boarding trains on their way to Switzerland and, and stuff like that. 
Um, more positive news, the restrictions in Ontario have been lifted and ski resorts can begin operating on February 16th. So that's great. You know, it's been kind of a challenging season for, for Canadian skiers, especially Canadian skiers in Ontario. Um, so I'm really happy to hear that. I know some of you guys live in Ontario, so I'm sure you're psyched to hear that as well. Uh, and yeah, we, you know, we've got a lot of ski season left. That's a ski season that starts at, on February 16th is, is better than nothing. You know, you still got, still got two solid months of skiing easily. And realistically, those are the two best months of skiing, kind of the, the end of February through March and then get some fun April spring skiing. So some COVID updates, um, some, some not so good, but nice to have a, a positive one in there. Um, and then the third topic of the week, kind of a somber one. Um, this has really unfortunately been a theme of this year's ski season, but just another bad week for avalanches in America. Um, I'm sure you guys hear about this because I know you're all informed people in the ski world, um, but four people passed away in an avalanche in Mill Creek Canyon, which is a pretty popular zone near Salt Lake City. Um, and, you know, as has been the case with many of these stories this year, all of them had the right gear. They were all very knowledgeable about backcountry safety. And it, it just goes to show once again that it's, it's, it's a completely uncontrolled environment. You know, you're, you're, you're yeah, you're, you're putting yourself in a, a risky situation really anytime you go out into the backcountry. So you got to be as diligent as possible and as safe as possible. But even then, you know, unfortunately, things can happen. Um, so, yeah, our, our thoughts go out to those skiers and their families and, and everyone was, that was involved in that situation. Um, we also got an article from Vermont Ski and Ride, which is a pretty small publication here in Vermont that does a really, really good job. Um, and they cover a lot of the details of the recent avalanche death in New Hampshire. Um, that wasn't in directly in the past week, but very recently. Um, that you know, that I think it's an interesting read if you want to want to read more about about that situation. Um, then we also have an article from CNN that's kind of recapping all of the recent United States avalanches, which unfortunately there are more than than the ones that we've been talking about. So. Yeah, uh, big bummer. Um, one of the edits of the week is actually kind of covering some avalanche safety, so we'll get to that in a second. But please, 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 anybody that's heading out in the backcountry, be as safe as possible. Even if you're here on the East Coast, things can happen. We were filming um, recently in Smuggler's Notch, and like I kind of positioned myself in a spot that I thought was very safe, and ultimately it was. Um, but yeah, Bob and Marcus kind of came, came down by me and, and made a couple turns for the camera and they both kicked up enough slough that it almost kind of pushed me over the edge of a, you know, 30 or 40 foot little cliff drop. So definitely I uh, got my heart racing, uh, not exactly an avalanche situation, but just uh, an example of, of, you know, things, it, it's an unsafe environment here in the East Coast too. So use all the safety precautions that you can please uh, especially scott my brother who's out there in utah uh, you know utah's got some some pretty pretty uh volatile avalanche conditions right now so be safe scott um last topic of the week uh kind of an interesting article from the wall street journal uh, Wall Street Journal does have a paywall, so some people may not be able to see this if you're not subscribed, um, but it kind of covers 12 different ways that ski areas are preparing to battle climate change. Um, so this is kind of something that we talk about a lot on Top 5 Fridays or, or traditionally have talked about a lot, um, and some of these things are pretty obvious. Some of them are a little bit more wild um, or, or more like ideas. Um, Snowmaking investments, you know, most resorts have been over the past couple decades already, but are making pretty significant investments in snowmaking. Different grooming strategies is another thing they talked about, which I thought was interesting, you know, where kind of snow placement sort of, um, like here at Stowe, you know, 
there are spots on the mountain that like very rarely get sun. So if you needed to kind of store some snow, so to speak, um, and then indoor skiing, you know, other, more resorts probably are going to start investing in the at least maybe some indoor skiing, you know, have like both offer both. Like I think a beginner, an indoor beginner slope is like a great idea on most mountains. Um, obviously a huge cost there, but I think that would be, I think a lot of skiers would really enjoy that. I think it would be a great way to bring people into the sport too. And then some of the more kind of advanced things that this article article talked about included things like cloud seeding, which we've already seen to some extent. Um, and then like alternative snowmaking methods and techniques like physically making the snow within a controlled environment, like a climate controlled environment. So you don't have to worry about outside temperatures and then taking that, like physically taking that snow and blowing it in a different manner from that building onto the slopes. So slightly different than how snow is currently made. Um, so pretty interesting. Take a look at that article if you're interested more about that stuff. And then finally, we have our edits of the week. Um, first one is a collaboration between TGR and Kai Jones. Uh, it's called Take a Rip Through Grand Targi with Kai Jones. Uh, pretty awesome 13-year-old skier to watch. Uh, very talented, and he, he's very well-spoken, too, for a 13-year-old, which I think is cool. Um, and then we have about a six- or seven-minute short film from The Bunch called Leaven. Uh, classic bunch skiing, and there's... Maybe more variety in, in this than some of the stuff that we see from the bunch. It's not just, it's not all strictly crazy urban stuff. There's some, they're skiing some actual snow too, which is fun. Uh, and then the last video of the week, I mentioned this just a few minutes ago, is Avalanche Awareness with Tom Wallish, uh, which was very well done. You know, I don't think Tom Wallish is particularly known for his, uh, his backcountry expertise, so to speak. He's more known for his, his pretzels and his afterbang. Uh, but I thought he did a really good job with the video and it's a great, just another great reminder of, of a few steps that you can take to stay safe when you're going out in the backcountry. Um, so that's it, that's Top 5 Fridays for the week. Uh, hopefully you guys can all get out on snow this week. Hopefully you've got great conditions where you live and, and you're enjoying the ski season. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we'll have a lot more content to share with you throughout the rest of the ski season, through the springs, through the summer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a couple fun videos planned next week, so keep an eye out for those. And we'll be back next Friday with another Top 5 Fridays. So we will talk to you then, and we'll see you out there on the slopes.